Good morning to everybody watching and to all our participants in the COVID-19 public health briefing. I'm uh, glad to see you here today and we're going to work together on seeing that uh, you get the information that's come out recently about COVID-19. So thank you for watching and participating. Uh, we're going to first have Desi Fleming talk from the Cass County Public Health Service. Good morning, Mayor. Thank you. As of yesterday's numbers, there were 1,994 positive cases in North Dakota with 1,229 or 62% in Cass County. There's been an increase of 363 cases since last week's briefing. Close contact and community spread continue to make up the majority of exposure sources for COVID infections at 71%, which is why contact tracing is an essential step to identify potential exposures to help slow the spread. The number of deaths have also increased since last week from 29 to 45. Of that total death, 34 have been Cass County residents. Recovered cases stand at 705. The saying, one death is a tragedy, but a million is a statistic, is very appropriate in our current pandemic situation. I don't want us to lose perspective that we may have lost, that we have lost 45 individuals to COVID in North Dakota. These were parents, grandparents, and friends. My sincere condolences to those that have experienced loss of a loved one during this time. The term positivity rate is used often at the state level. This can be a valuable measure to report, but we need to keep in mind the rate can also be skewed depending on individuals being tested. If there's a mass testing for the general public, the positivity rate will be much lower than targeted testing based on higher exposure potential. As the statewide positivity rates are reported, Keep in mind that this is not always apples to apples comparison as testing strategies vary across the state. I wanted to clarify today some information pertaining to our Red River Task Force activities. As you may recall, our first meeting of the task force was May 8th, a few days after the governor requested. Previously, there was an existing testing matrix for Cass County that was determined at the state level. The first goal of our task force was to, to develop a locally generated testing matrix it has taken some time to tra transition out of one testing matrix and into the next. So starting today, the testing matrix for our area is 100% locally prioritized. Cass County has recently been designated 1,000 COVID tests per day, which is 50% of the North Dakota Department of Health lab capacity. This capacity reflects the total number of tests the lab is able to run in a 24 hour period. Again, this is a guide. So based on schedule and need, there may be fluctuations in daily testing totals. The goal of our testing matrix is to concentrate the majority of testing in the Monday through Friday timeframe, given that the numbers reported over the weekends may be lower and weekdays may be higher. We may add in weekend targeted testing based on need. The targeted testing events are focusing resources on individuals at a higher risk of exposure, which may include occupation, living situation or exposure to a positive case. This, in combination with epidemiology data, helps determine where to focus our testing efforts. The goal of targeted testing is to find more positive cases than to isolate or quarantine along with identifying close contacts, ultimately decreasing the spread. We have decided as a task force to focus on daily hospitalizations and daily deaths as an indicator to help us gauge the capacity of our local health systems in their response efforts to care for COVID patients. Since Cass County is concentrating solely on targeted testing, both our positivity rate and general positive numbers will be higher. We expect numbers to go up. We want to find cases. Our numbers need to go up before they can go down. As we go into the holiday weekend, most of you are aware that the social gathering guidance from the state recently increased from 10 to 250 people. The loosening of the gathering guidance should not instill a false sense of security. The prevention practices of physical distancing, good hygiene, and cleaning and disinfecting processes still apply and are necessary. Please exercise caution, especially for any graduation gatherings, we know that the risk can be lowered by making good decisions such as limiting attendance, being outdoors, and establishing physical distancing. As a precaution, as noted on the North Dakota Department of Health website, you should also keep a guest book of attendees for any gatherings you decide to host, as this may be needed for contact tracing in the event of a COVID exposure. 
There is still much uncertainty going forward as to how this virus is going to behave over the next several months. Will it wane over the summer? Will it stay fairly constant? Will it surge in the fall? Unfortunately, there is no answer. There is new information we are learning daily, which can be overwhelming and frustrating. We need to be patient, be cautious, and consider our information sources. And not to add to stress, but influenza season is also not far away. The impact influenza has in our area each year is significant, and how we will manage that coupled with COVID is concerning given potential impacts and demands on our healthcare system. Because it is very unlikely that a COVID vaccine will be developed and deployed before this fall, flu shots will be a very important prevention tool. We all hope this virus becomes less of an issue. We all hope a vaccine is developed soon that can provide us with immunity. We all hope the impact to our vulnerable community members is minimal. However, as I've heard from various public health experts, hope is not a strategy. We need to continue to exercise caution and common sense and be vigilant with those prevention efforts we've learned over the past nine weeks and to recognize our risk factors and how to minimize them. Michael Levitt, the former Secretary of Health and Human Services under George W. Bush said, everything we do before a pandemic will seem alarmist. Everything after will seem inadequate. We have done a great job of flattening the curve in North Dakota and all these actions may seem like we have overreacted. Asking the public to wear a mask feels like an overreaction to a lot of people. The goal is to make sure that nothing happens. If nothing happens, we've succeeded. If nothing happens, we have protected our most vulnerable. So please be kind, be smart, be respectful of others and wear a mask when you are in public spaces. Thank you. Thank you, Desi. Our next speaker is Kathy McKay from Clay County Public Health. Kathy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the Minnesota cases are over 17,000 currently, but 11,540 are no longer in isolation. 748 of those um, are deaths in Minnesota. Our Clay County numbers, we currently have 318 cases. Um, 207 of those are still active. 90 have no longer needed isolation, and we do have 21 deaths. And as Desi mentioned earlier, um, the deaths are, are important in the fact that loved ones have been lost. So we um, express our sympathy to those family and friends who have had those losses uh, due to this COVID. On May 13th, Governor Walls announced a new focus on rapid expansion, expansion of testing in our long-term care and assisted living facilities across Minnesota. The goal is to help reduce illness and death by detecting those who are positive but are not showing symptoms and that are in high-risk environments. This aligns uh, with the Red River Valley COVID Task Force to prevent and mitigate community spread. Our Minnesota National Guard is working with the Minnesota Department of Health and local public health um, and have trained teams who are now performing the testing in our Minnesota facilities. So far in Clay County, we've tested over a thousand residents and staff in our long-term care and assisted living and the testing um, is ongoing. Local public health is now providing case investigation along with the Minnesota Department of Health and contact tracing is still being provided by Minnesota Department of Health. For the general public, if you have questions about um, testing for COVID symptoms, or if you think you've been in contact with a positive case, we um, want you to contact your healthcare provider and they will provide further guidance on the testing. The Minnesota governor is taking some cautious and strategic steps toward getting people safely back to work. He has labeled this response as safely adjusting the dials for workplace settings and social settings. His objectives for moving forward is for Minnesotans to, Minnesotans to live healthy, safe and happy lives, slowing the spread and slowly building the immunity with the realization that elimination is impossible at this time. Protect those working on the front lines by increasing that personal protective equipment ensuring our healthcare systems can care for those with COVID and other conditions, 
strategically get more Minnesotans back to work and safely resume in-person contacts and other activities for our well-being. In Minnesota, we still um, are expressing the need for family and friends to just gather in groups of 10 or fewer with safe social distancing practices in place. Continuing previous guidance, we're staying at home when you're ill, wear a mask and eye protection when you're out in the public. And the at-risk persons are still strongly encouraged to stay home or in their place of residence and follow the stay safe order. Reach out through virtual methods for those who are continuing to stay at home and protecting their health. Um, and those at-risk individual, individuals are the people over 65, those who live in congregate care, and those with underlying health conditions. This is a stressful time and help is available. We urge you to pay attention to your mental health during this transition, learn self-care strategies, and for mental health resources, please reach out to FirstLink by dialing 211. There's also a texting option with FirstLink. You can text 898-211 and you enter your zip code and then you will receive free confidential help and support. We, we also um, want people to know to continue engage in some, some form of physical activity, take care of your mental health. And just like the back of our currency um, states, in God we trust. So we can trust that God is with us through these challenges that we face. And we um, can choose faith over fear, wisdom over worry, and prayer over panic. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Thank you, Kathy. Our next speaker is Dr. Doug Griffin, uh, CMO of uh, Sanford Health System. Uh, good morning, thank you for the opportunity again uh, this week. Uh, just a brief update of uh, current activity uh, here at Sanford and Fargo. We're caring for 42 patients in our hospital who have tested positive for COVID-19. That remains a, a very similar number that we've had over the last uh, two weeks. Um, we have had 85 uh, Sanford Fargo employees that have tested positive. More than half of them uh, are back at work, having fully recovered, uh, and the rest are all at home uh, and, uh, and or recovered yet and remaining at home. Uh, one of the things that we monitor, uh, and Desi pointed out several of the thing, nuances about testing, uh, is the rate at which the cumulative number of cases doubles. An increase in the doubling time indicates a slowdown in transmission if the underlying reporting report rate remains unchanged. In North Dakota, we've been at 22 days. Uh, comparatively, Minnesota is at 16 days. I checked the, this morning. However, as we increase the number of tests and the reporting rate changes, that may affect that. Our drive-through testing appointments are at higher numbers now daily, well over 200 uh, appointments are being seen. This has in part been driven by uh, broadening of our testing criteria uh, and also people needing to be tested prior to surgery and other procedures uh, that are requiring testing before uh, the procedure is completed. Uh, the most recent up-to-date news that I have is beginning today at 8 a.m., we are allowing one visitor per patient during visiting hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily for all areas except our designated COVID-19 units. Patients are allowed to bring one visitor with them for clinic or outpatient appointments as well. Uh, they will be screened uh, for uh, any signs of illness and they will be uh, asked to wear, bring a mask. If not uh, bringing a mask, they'll be provided one while they're in the facility. Our long-term care facilities remain temporarily closed to all visitors until further notice to protect the health of our employees and residents who face the highest risk of illness. And updates on our visitation uh, policy can be found at our website, SanfordHealth.org. Um, as one might expect, the number of uh, baby deliveries has continued at relatively normal rates throughout this time. However, some mothers to be come to us positive for COVID-19. Uh, we've been able to manage that quite comfortably, and I'm happy to report no complications during delivery related to COVID-19, and none of the newborns delivered by mothers with the virus have tested positive. 
Unfortunately, we have been seeing more patients in our emergency department with injuries from abuse or conflicts. We know not everyone has a safe home environment and this pandemic situation can increase stress, anxiety, and behavioral health issues. Please, if you're experiencing this type of situation, reach out. If you are an immediate danger to yourself or by others, call 911. Contact any resources you have, perhaps through your employer, your primary care or mental health pro uh, provider, or in Fargo-Moorhead, we have a 24-hour crisis line from the Rape and Abuse uh, Center at 1-800-344-7273. On a good note, we are seeing more patients coming in for immunizations, routine checkups, and therapies and preventive screenings. Our safety message Message, masking and social distancing guidelines, signs and building markers are having a very positive impact in our clinics. With sports and annual school physicals coming up, I suggest everyone get their appointments scheduled. For those in need of care, our promise is to continue to keep patients and staff safe. There is also some good news that many people may have seen on the quest for a coronavirus vaccine. The bio tech company Moderna says it has good early results, and I'll emphasize these are very early results from participants in the vaccine trial. Trial participants develop neutralizing antibodies that sometimes surpass levels seen in people who have naturally recovered from COVID-19. It's still not clear whether this means this vaccine will prevent infection or reinfection. The trial was very small, and the results have never been peer-reviewed. But Moderna says if future, if future studies go well, the vaccine could be available for the public sometime next year. But then I would caution anybody, vaccine development is very complicated and this is very early. I also want to recognize that this is National EMS Week and we're celebrating all Sanford Health, Sanford Air Med, and FM Ambulance Service Emergency Medical Technicians and First Responders. Thank you for providing life-saving emergency care every day. Thank you much. Thank you, Dr. Griffin. And we do have to thank those emergency health care workers that are out there every day taking care of this problem. Next, we have Essential Health uh, CMO, Dr. Rich Better. Good morning. It's good to be with all of you again today to provide this update uh, on behalf of Essential Health. Uh, to begin with today, I wanted to provide an update on a recent health advisory that came from the CDC and the State Health Department. Uh, this is in regards to a condition called multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. Uh, it's felt that this could possibly be due to COVID-19 infection. We've gotten several calls this, week's, this week from concerned parents, and so I thought I'd take this opportunity to address it at this time. Uh, for those of us as parents, I think one of the most reassuring aspects of the coronavirus infection has been that it largely spares children and for the most part just causes minor symptoms or no symptoms at all. And even those that become ill uh, tend to recover uh, relatively uh, well. Uh, this condition was first noticed in the United Kingdom uh, at the end of April, where they reported eight cases of previously healthy children who came to the hospital with severe inflammatory syndrome and tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, these children are very ill with fever, low blood pressure, a rash, swollen lymph nodes, and multi-organ involvement. This past month in New York City, there was also a report of 15 cases with similar symptoms and severe illness. It's important to note that most of these cases recovered. So it's some of the takeaways I want people to know. Number one, this is an extremely rare condition. Uh, most children that get COVID infection are still gonna have very mild symptoms uh, and, and tend to recover quite well. Uh, some of the symptoms that you might wanna watch for is just what does your child look like, just like any other illness? If your child looks healthy, is eating, drinking, sleeping, playing, uh, even if they have a low fever, uh, I wouldn't be too worried about that. On the other hand, if your child looks ill, uh, isn't eating, isn't drinking, uh, isn't playing or doing their usual activities, or just generally uh, looks lethargic and, and ill, then it, you should be reaching out to your primary care provider or consider uh, taking them to the emergency department. But again, this is an extremely rare condition, and um, I know there's parents concerned about that. Next, I thought I would provide an update on some of the medications that uh, you might be hearing about to potentially treat severe COVID-infected patients. Uh, at Essentia, we've been using a couple uh, different uh, protocols to treat some of our hospitalized uh, sickest patients. 
Last week, I reported that the state health department received an allocation of rem remdesivir from the federal government and then distributed that to our major hospitals throughout our state. And I understand that there's another allocation coming this week. Remdesivir is an antiviral medication that has been shown in a clinical trial to shorten the recovery time in some patients. Uh, it's still considered an investigational drug uh, and has only been authorized as an emergency use authorization by the FDA. So again, just want to stress that there is no medication that has been shown to, to quote, cure a COVID infection. Uh, there are some strict inclusion and exclusion criteria for the use of remdesivir. Uh, it must be given IV, it's given daily in hospitalized patients for up to 10 days. Uh, it can have some cautions around it as well with uh, liver disease, chronic kidney disease, or pregnant patients. One of the other medications that uh, we've used at Essentia, um, basically following along with a Mayo Clinic protocol, is the use of convalescent plasma. And this is plasma that's recovered from COVID-19 infected patients who have recovered and you basically collect their plasma, which has the antibodies that they uh, produced uh, when they had the infection, and you take those antibodies and give it to another ill patient. And there has been some modest benefit in some limited studies uh, with uh, convalescent plasma treatment as well. Just one final uh, uh, drug, uh, hydroxychloroquine, which has had a lot of news uh, a few weeks back, is an anti-malarial drug that's used for other inflammatory conditions like lupus. Uh, there was a recent study that showed that uh, there was really no benefit in acutely ill patients. In fact, the cardiac risk factors, including irregular heartbeats or arrhythmias, uh, was higher in that group. And so uh, at Essentia, as I know a lot of other healthcare organizations, uh, we've discontinued using that in those uh, uh, severely ill patients. Uh, Dr. Griffin covered uh, the vaccine uh, that made the news this past uh, week. Um, I think uh, I've been asked to kind of comment a little bit about whether or not we think a vaccine will be available and if so, by when. Uh, the one thing that uh, we have identified about the COVID-19 virus is that it genetically is quite stable. It hasn't been showing that its, it's uh, genetic makeup is changing very rapidly, uh, which does hold some promise that once we identify uh, a vaccine that works, um, it hopefully uh, will be stable and you won't have to uh, potentially give it uh, repeatedly uh, or um, the, the, the need for giving it repeatedly re would be reduced. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Griffin's words about caution about when a vaccine might be available are, are warranted, um, especially in large uh, quantities, which it would take to vaccinate the entire population. Um, there's probably over 100 different companies right now working on a vaccine. Uh, in my review, I found that it looks like maybe six of them that hold some promise for having a potential vaccine in the next um, year or so. Next, switching gears a little bit, just for an update on our volumes at Essentia Health West. Um, uh, we've been stable with our hospitalized volumes around five to 10 over the past three to four weeks. Uh, we see some variability up and down a little bit, but it's been pretty consistent in that five to 10 per week. Uh, we have a, a data analytics team that's been doing some modeling and they work with um, the state of Minnesota on that as well. Uh, they've reported this week that our doubling time uh, has actually increased to 14 days. If you remember back uh, several weeks ago or a month or ago or more, uh, it was around uh, seven, five to seven days. So um, so I think what that suggests is that the social distancing that uh, we're all advocating uh, is making an impact. I just wanted to provide an update also briefly on what we're doing at Essentia to keep our patients and staff uh, safe and healthy. Uh, we continue to encourage the use of our video visit technology for common health concerns and for chronic disease management. Uh, I was reminded a couple days ago um, that it was estimated that for every face-to-face -face visit historically that was done would involve about five different contacts with other healthcare providers in that clinic setting. So if you do the math uh, at Essentia, we've completed over 125,000 virtual visits over the past couple months. Uh, so that's helped avoid over 625,000 contacts. Uh, and I think that's significant when you talk about social distancing. So we're continuing to advocate for that technology when appropriate. That being said, uh, we do want to remind people that if you do need a face-to-face -face visit, uh, which some conditions do warrant, or if you have an emergency condition, uh, we do want you to come in. Our motto is really that we want to provide the right care at the right place uh, and at the right time. 
Finally, I'd just also like to extend my thanks also to our first responders uh, and healthcare workers for their dedication and pers perseverance. Uh, it seems like it's been a long time that we've been at this, even though it's only been a couple months, but we need to keep up the fight. With summer coming, just wanna make a quick reminder uh, to everyone as well, uh, use sunblock, stay hydrated, use appropriate mosquito repellent, wear your bike helmet, uh, and your life jacket if you're doing water activities. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vetter and Dr. Griffin. Very much appreciate that. As Desi mentioned a little while ago, we talked about the Red River COVID-19 Task Force and the progress it's made. We're very pleased with that. Over this last week, what we've uh, isolated out is a matrix of how many people we're gonna test and how we're going forward. You'll see the National Guard out in the community, and in the community, uh, they all set up test sites where they will test people. We also have a team reaching out to businesses to work with businesses as well. There are certain business factors that we feel that are out there that we'd want you to look at uh, when you're looking at your business. So we have the following conditions that we would talk about. If you uh, have more than 100 employees, your potential for an outbreak is higher. If you have a confined workspace in which 25 people work in a space that uh, more than two hours a day, they would be at risk. If you don't have really good ventilation or have ability to open windows uh, or doors to the outside, that also makes your business at more of a risk. And then lastly, if there are some known infections in your business, two or more infections in your business, then you may have the potential to have other people with contact tracing. We will be able to find if there's other people that may be at risk as well. Very much, again, we want to do targeted testing to decrease the spread of the disease we would like to get into your business. So we do have part of our task force that is working with this part of the issue for you as well. Second item I wanted to talk about is that we always talk about how many people are getting COVID-19, but we don't always talk about the amount of people that are recovering from it. So if you see the charts, you'll see these active cases that go out there, but I want you to focus on the lower chart because if you look at the lower chart, that's how the people that are recovering. And in our county, 57% of the people have recovered from this virus. They tested positive and now they're recovered. And throughout the state, 63% of the people have recovered from the virus as well. So we have to remember that when we're talking about this in our community, when we have 1,100 cases, that 65% of those are in the recovered mark. The other thing we want to talk about the mortality. So people always get concerned. You are going to have some deaths in the nursing homes that would come every year anyway, but you do have uh, the people in the nursing home that are at higher risk. The expected mortality of this disease is 6%. What we're seeing is our mortality is 3.6%. So the governor at one time said there to be almost 200 deaths in the city of, uh, or in the Cass County region. And actually, we're not even over 50 at this point. So we've done very well with how we've done with our people and protected them from getting this. Need to still stay diligent, and as you can see, the hospitals are going to open up to visitors, but nursing homes are still very rigid on who they will allow in there until this thing continues to go down in lower numbers. The other item we wanted to talk about is hospitalizations. And we want to change the focus from daily count. Our daily count could go to 100, could go to 150, because we're looking for the cases. But you need to know in, uh, in the state of North Dakota, only 6.7% of the people are hospitalized. So that's a very small percentage of those positive cases <clears throat> that come up positive. But we're running a hospitalization rate around 30 to 40 at best throughout the state. And what we're finding, even locally, it seems to be plateaued both at Sanford and Essentia. So they're staying at the same numbers. So that's great because what that tells us is, is that this disease is not continuing to climb and it won't maximize out our medical health facilities. We had some cots set up at the Fargo Dome. We're going to take those down because we do not believe we're going to get to the capacity where we're going to do that. Lastly, when I've been driving around and being in the community, I am a bit concerned about the ability of people to social distance and wear masks. Uh, in any of the high areas where we're together and moving together, grocery stores, when you're in the sports stores, when you're in the Home Depot or when you're in summer, please wear your mask, social distance. That will very much help us continue to go on a downward trend. 
And the summer is coming. We're going to want to get out and do the things we want to do. Graduations are coming. It's a high risk time in which people may increase the numbers and we may have a spread of this disease. So help protect yourself and those around you. Please take your precautions as you should. And we're winning on this. We got to remember that this is actually, we are doing very well. And people are doing a great job in our community. So again, I ask you to be respectful of each other and we can still win this, this war against this virus. Our next speaker would be West Fargo Commissioner President Bernie Dardis. Bernie. I can see him speaking, but we don't have his sound on quite yet. And we've got Jonathan Judd up instead of him, so. Is he coming on? He's, he's on. Bernie, can you speak now? Do you want to go to Judd? I'm sorry, Bernie, we'll come back to you. We're going to go to Mayor Judd first here. Jonathan, are you ready? I am, Mayor. Uh, thank you uh, very much again for hosting this. Uh, <clears throat> so I think uh, pe folks know by now that uh, Governor Walls has allowed the stay-at-home Minnesota uh, executive orders to expire on May 18th. Uh, Minnesota is now operating under a stay-safe order. Uh, Governor Walls is using the analogy of turning the dial in order to resume activities over time. Now, for businesses, most essential and non-essential businesses uh, can be open, but, but operating under a preparedness plan that, author, that adheres to Minnesota Department of Health and Centers for Disease Control uh, Standards. Uh, just a few of the restrictions. Uh, Customer-facing <coughs> businesses, such as retail establishments, can operate at a 50% capacity. Bars, dining restaurants, salons, and fitness facilities are not as of yet included in the reopening. Uh, closure of those facilities has been extended through May 31st. Uh, just a reminder to please patronize our local businesses, restaurants, uh, those specifically, those restaurants that are offering takeout service, uh, they can really use your support. So as always, uh, dine local, shop local. Uh, employees should continue to work from home uh, as much as, as possible. Now for gatherings, uh, gatherings of 10 or less are permitted uh, so long as social distancing standards are maintained. Vulnerable uh, folks are encouraged to continue to stay at home as much as possible, but also uh, to follow a health guidance when leaving their homes, uh, such as wearing masks. Uh, the city of Moorhead continues to operate with facilities being closed to the public. There are plans currently for gradual reopening, which are way, but no immediate changes are in time. A decision was made last week uh, to close our municipal swimming pools and weight pools uh, this summer due to the difficulties of maintaining a safe and healthy environment for our residents and employees. We are continuing to develop alternative recreational opportunities uh, to make the best of the 2020 summer. Check the Parks and Recreation page of our website as new activities will be announced there uh, first. Lastly, I will report that uh, yesterday was the first of monthly commemoration of COVID-19 victims in Minnesota. Governor Walls has directed uh, all flags at state and federal buildings in Minnesota to be flown at half staff uh, from sunrise to sunset on the 19th of every month through 2020 to remember, mourn, and honor lives that were lost due to COVID-19. This commemoration started yesterday. Individuals, businesses, and other organizations are also encouraged to join in this recognition on the 19th of every month to honor those Minnesotans who have lost their lives to the coronavirus pandemic, as well as their families. I know that we often talk 
in statistics during uh, these meetings, but each life uh, that is lost to this virus is an individual with many connections and loved ones. So we appreciate the opportunity uh, to recognize them in their lives. Uh, so with that, Mayor, I have uh, no further report, but again, thank you everyone for being here and uh, thank you again for your work and uh, working through this uh, situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Judd. Now we're gonna try to go back to Bernie Dardis. Mayor, are you ready? Still? Can you hear me? Yep. Good afternoon, Mayor Mahoney, and thank you for inviting us to be back with you today. The City of West Fargo staff has been working from home since late March and have now started to return to our buildings. Over the last two weeks, we have been rotating the employees in by departments and uh, getting back to, to a new normal. Uh, it's being slowly ramped up uh, to protect our employees as well as the public. Uh, this includes uh, uh, monitoring the temperatures at various stations throughout our buildings, frequent disinfecting, hand washing, and of course, continuing to keep the building closed to the public. And also any general areas within our, our facility, you must wear a mask. You must work with your cl door closed also. The West Fargo playgrounds have reopened to the public. While playing or being, being near others, we wanna remind you of the social distancing rules Wash your hands, sanitize, and wear your mask. And if you're feeling sick, please stay home. We want to encourage our businesses to continue to their restart and adjust their protocols to protect their employees and their customers and to check out NorthDakotaResponse.gov, NDResponse.gov. It has great uh, insight as to what those protocols should be and some of the things that uh, various businesses are doing across the state and in our community that can, can help you get back to that uh, serving your public. We also wanna encourage our residents to check out the resources that, are, are, that help them, such as the Heat Assistance Program, the NICE Center at NDSU, and the Department of Health Services Emergency Rent Bridge. Uh, they have a substantial amount of money that uh, they're able to help the public with. I also wanna remind the public that May is Mental Health Awareness Month the outbreak of COVID-19 can be stressful for people, for all of us, and fear and anxiety about the disease can be overwhelming at times and cause strong emotions. So we, we encourage you to find ways to cope with this stress and we will help you make that as easy as possible. There are lots of resources out there today that can help you cope with this pandemic. First Link 211 and also uh, 898 211 with your zip code can help you. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of those folks that continue to serve with me on the Red River Task Force. Your guidance, your dedication, and your leadership will get us through all of this. It is especially, I am especially grateful to the North Dakota Public Health and the Fargo Catholic Health leadership. The advice that they give us on a morning daily basis uh, guides us in the decisions that we make in trying to protect our public. So we're very grateful for that. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Bernie, glad we could finally get you on. Our next speaker is Cass County Commissioner Pre uh, Chair uh, Chad Peterson. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Thank you to everyone on the call, public staff, first responders and healthcare workers. And thank you especially to the business owners and staff doing their best to keep themselves and their customers safe. I'd like to deviate a little bit from my normal format for a moment of gratitude, as our governor says, and to further reinforce prior messages. The team at Cass County wants to take a minute to highlight the excellent work done by Desi Fleming and her team at Fargo Cass Public Health. As the response to COVID-19 evolves, the team at Fargo Cass Public Health has been asked to do more, as you well know, Ms. Fleming often on shorter and shorter timelines. Please know that we see this, we appreciate it, and we appreciate your efforts. Now to the data. Recent public attention has been focused on the number of positive cases that continue to be identified in Cass County. 
and the fact that the percentage, is, percentage of positive cases exceeds the state average. This should actually be seen as a success. It means we're using our testing resources strategically in areas where our public health experts believe outbreaks could be most concentrated. We've heard from epidemiologists and other public health experts that the strategy is the most effective and should continue. And for now, we will. The same public health experts tell us the key statistics to focus on are not the total number of cases, nor even the new positive cases. Rather, we should be focused on the number of currently hospitalized and, of course, the mortality rate. Currently, our hospital capacity, let me get to my spot here. <laughs> Currently, our hospital capacity to treat individuals who develop complications treated to COVID-19 is excellent. And the availability to help the people, should they need help, should be reassuring to all of our citizens. And this goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. Any loss of life is tragic. Our deepest sympathies go to the families who've passed, who have loved ones that have passed as a result of COVID-19. In closing, again, I want to thank Mrs. Fleming and her team for doing the hard work and being dedicated throughout these unprecedented times. And of course, from Cass, stay up to date with any changes moving forward by following at Cass County Gov ND on Twitter and Facebook. And again, thank you to everyone listening, watching, paying attention. Stay safe, stay smart. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chad. Our last speaker is Clay County Commissioner Vice Chair Jim Haney. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Uh, to continue along the lines of keeping things in perspective, as you were discussing and as Commissioner Peterson was, uh, while regrettable, every death is regrettable, of course, but for a perspective, there's 45 deaths in North Dakota out of 762,000 people. That is a mortality rate a point zero 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 five nine, or less than one one hundredth of one percent. In Minnesota, it's slightly higher. The actual mortality rate in Minnesota is point zero 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 seven eight, or seven point eight people out of a hundred thousand people. Many people go to the lakes over Memorial Day weekend, and we want to remind you to continue following Minnesota's stay safe order. The stay safe order replaced the stay at home order on Monday, May 18th. The order gives travel guidance to your summer locations, including traveling to your destination as directly as possible and limiting stops along the way. This helps to prevent unnecessary community spread from asymptomatic individuals. If you are sick, please stay home and do not travel. In Minnesota, state parks are open for day use only throughout the month of May. The weather is conducive for outdoor activities, increasing the daily traffic at state parks. Please remember to maintain six foot social distancing. This stay safe order applies to anyone in Minnesota, whether you are visiting or if you own property in the state. Remember that the order also includes practicing social distancing by gathering in groups no larger than 10 people. Social distancing also includes wearing masks when you in, are in proximity with other people who do not live in your household. If you're looking for more information, please visit the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources website. Clay County initiated the first phase of reopening to the public. Most services are available by appointment only. The public is asked to wear cloth face masks when coming into the building for services. The Minnesota Department of Motor Vehicle is limiting the number of people allowed in the building at one time and citizens will check in with DMV staff at the exterior entrance. A drop off box for tab renewals will continue to be available at the DMV entrance for your convenience Monday through Friday. This procedure will take place through at least May 29th. I would like to thank the public health and emergency managers for all their hard work and dedication during COVID-19. I'd also like to thank all the essential workers in all the stores who have kept our great country operating. As we approach Memorial Day, we want to honor the men and women who've served in the military and especially those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. As we celebrate this holiday weekend, stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Dr. Mahoney. Very good. Thank you, Jim. And that's very true. We need to Memorial Day weekend is for all those people who have fallen and served in us in the past. And that's very much a different kind of Memorial weekend we have. 
The other issue, as you see, is it's kickoff of summer for many of us. This is when summer starts almost officially for many people. You will be out and about and doing the things, but stay safe, stay distanced, and if you do graduation parties, do the same. So have a good week. We hope all goes well, and we'll uh, see you again next week. Thank you.